the Colonial Pipeline hack is a new extreme for ransomware. And so basically, uh, you know, if you've been under a rock, there was a ransomware attack that has basically <laughs> taken down a pipeline that supplies most of the uh, fuel supply to the East Coast. And so, uh, you know, we, we know a little bit about, about the specifics of this case and, and, uh, and how the malware worked. But, uh, you know, we can, we can talk a little bit in, in general with you. Uh, about you know what what could have been done to prevent these things. So, uh, is is there anything from uh, from this news story that that stands out to you as kind of the glaring mistake that was made that that could have been solved or, or could have been patched to uh, stop this from happening? Yeah, if if this uh, ransomware attack has not been tied up to a critical infrastructure, it would have been a normal ransomware attack. The the, the problem with this one, what aggravates it, is that it's tied up to critical infrastructure, and it's it has the possibility to impact millions of lives. Imagine this thing going to to be a nation state uh, attack in which they blow those pipelines and and actually blow those uh, control systems and even infiltrate some of our other infrastructure that, that's the scary thing about this. to a novice like me you know I, i'm thinking oh well well those systems are much more secure and sure all these companies can be hacked and and, and have ransomware and things but you know those kinds of things power grids and and oil supplies th those things are more secure but i mean are you saying they're, they're basically just using the same things that that other companies are using and are, are just as vulnerable and, and like you said it could have been much worse if this had been uh been an attack from from say a, a nation state. Yeah, exactly. And the, the the thing about this one is that the I, I have the I have a reason to believe that some of the information got exfiltrated already, and this exfiltration of this information could be used sometime in the future to act to actually attack some of our infrastructures, and uh, and that that could actually lead us to to, to more serious trouble. So, you know, it's, it's interesting, right, when we talk about this, because there, there are two sides, right, to most of these attacks. We have the hardened control systems, right, the ICS side of the house, so to speak, where, you know, you've got pipeline control, flow control, uh, pig solutions that are going down the pipeline, assessing things like that. But then you also have the administrative side, right? And more often than not, we see that the attacks are coming in not on the hardened infrastructure, because it's really hard to get into those systems and do damage. They're well protected, but it's the administrative side where humans are interacting more often than not that we see a lot of these attacks propagating, probably most likely through phishing more often than not, although not exclusively. So, Professor, Doctor, right, is it fair to say that if we focus on really getting the human area, right, the administrative side, the human interaction side more secure, more focused on awareness and security, while it's not a perfect panacea, are we going to see some sort of drop in the effect of these attacks? Because they're, they're ratcheting up, right? We're seeing more and more of them in supply chains across the world. And if we exclude the nation state side that is clearly hard to defend against, but this is more a criminal activity, it seems like, can we defend more securely? Can we be more effective if we focus on the human element? Is that something you think would make sense? Yeah, I think you raised an excellent point. You know, the, the human element is always the weakest point here in cybersecurity. So if we can actually handle that properly, I think it solves, I would say, maybe 75, 80% of our problems. So you're absolutely right. Taking care of the human element of cybersecurity is, is, is a, a step towards, a big step towards uh, solving this problem. Yeah, uh, so I'm uh, really interested about this as I was reading about this, and A, I agree with you totally, right? We were actually talking about this on the last podcast of how, why do we keep doing these things that we know aren't good for us, especially when it comes to things like ICS and SCADA and And expecting different right. outcomes. And they think, oh, well, everything should just be fine. It's right. so nice to be able to sit back in a lounge chair and connect to my administrative functionality inside of these uh, industrial systems and critical infrastructure. It's real nice in theory, except we open ourselves up for a our problem. But what really caught me was the idea that, from what I've read, the only thing that's really been affected is the administrative technologies. It it's, hasn't really, as far as what they've released, hasn't touched the OT. But they have to cut the OT off as part of, as part of emergency 
uh, reactionary measures, right? So because they can't we, ensure the we, safety right, without we administrative can't, oversight. We can't know right. right now, and until we do, the default mechanism is to say, "Oh, we're just not going to use that." And you see, it's almost like a type of an amplification attack where. All I have to do is gain access as an attacker to one small thing that has hooks into those things, and then I can leverage that to a larger attack because now by policy, security policy, they have to shut these large things off, and I've effectively amplified my scope of my attack. So it, it really shows the importance of us starting to do a better job on that smaller side of the, or the less impactful side, as it were, of the, the human interaction with these systems, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, there was a study that was made uh, about uh, yeah, cybersecurity awareness that was conducted uh, on, on people. They, they did some uh, uh, cybersecurity awareness training, and guess how many days it took them to revert back to the same uh, the same ways that they've been doing that is the uh, unsafe and insecure ways. I think, if I remember it correctly, about 45, 60 days, and, and they, they they do the same thing. So so those trainings needs to be done, you know, as frequent as possible. And uh, my, my second point is that I have a feeling that uh, this uh, uh, ransomware attack has been done on the IT side of the house, but it probably the the reason it was so slow in, in getting back to a normal uh, set of things is because. I have a, a, I'm speculating that some areas on the OT side probably have been infiltrated. But you, you know, the, the IT and OT, it's traditionally going to be segmented networks. But no matter how you segment this network, there's still a possibility that you could actually get to the other side. Unless you act, now you act, even if you, I would say even if you air got these things, there's still a possibility that you could get to the other side. But you know that that's another story. So maybe if I could, we could turn our attention. We're still talking about the pipeline and just the impact overall. It's a really big thing. But you know, you work in some really fascinating areas. You shared with us that you're doing work in self-driving autonomous vehicles, in in radio frequency security, what we think of as drone security today. And these are all areas that, although maybe not on the surface, seem related to what's going on they are interconnected systems and they are systems that we're coming to rely on more and more. I mean, Domino's is, by the way, right? Demoing self-driving pizza delivery. This is a big <laughs> thing, right? That's critical so, infrastructure. It yeah. is critical infrastructure, it's pizza. So, you know, they're all kidding aside though, there are really clearly implications here, right? In many, many areas for these kinds of attacks. And you made the point earlier that there's probably been information exfiltration. We're pretty confident that's happened because in ransomware attacks traditionally, that's the secondary ransom payment is you pay us to get access to the data you still have, and then you pay us to destroy the data that we probably exfiltrated, right? To make that worth our while if we're the bad actor. Are there concerns that you're thinking about forward looking in the technology areas you're, you're working on now that are similar to these kinds of issues? Are you worried about ransomware attacks in the autonomous and drone space? Are you worried about the impact of interconnected administrative and, and self-maintaining systems and how we oversee them and the ability for not only nation states but bad actors to intercede and take control? Are, are these areas you're focused on in your research? And if so, yeah. what's going on with that? Maybe you could enlighten us just a little bit. Yeah, now to give you an example, that attack in Ukraine that happened a while, a while back, I think in 2016, it's a black energy attack in Ukraine. It took them a while to actually exfiltrate the data out of those uh, power grid in Ukraine. I think it took them six to eight months to actually build a replica of that tool thing in order to actually execute an attack on a replica before they actually introduce the attack into the real grid. So what scares me at night now is thinking about all these things that's happening in our network, you know, on the internet. Some bad guys have been building, have been collecting, exfiltrating this data, all the vulnerabilities, and, and just building all this knowledge together. At some point in time, somebody will execute that attack that will create some really big, uh, uh, that will hurt us big time. 
I guess it's the combination, right, of that information, that slow and low attack that yeah. is really just there behind the scenes, gathering that information, yeah. reconnaissance, right? We yeah. would think of it that way. <clears throat> but then the ability to gather that information, put it to use slowly over time, and maybe with a criminal syndicate pairing with a nation state, which is the worst possible outcome, right, the worst possible scenario, leveraging that maybe months, weeks, days, or even years down the road when we don't see it coming, when we're no longer vigilant and we're no longer in this space looking at it, is a really significant issue, right? One we got to think about. And, so. and I'm, I'm wondering, like, how much... Uh, like true red teaming operations are they doing against these type of things to look for those types of attacks Find those warnings do those threat models that are uh, going to be from things like nation state actors and those known ransomware entities that are out there that might be targeting them how deep are they getting into the weeds on that to try to get ahead of this thing or now they just now going oh no we got to hit the panic button and now they're starting to ramp up because of it Yep, uh, that's that's a very uh, good point. The, the issue here is that we cannot just do a red team exercise on this uh, uh, operational devices. So that's that's one issue. Uh, the other issue with this one is we have so many legacy devices that are still out there, and replacing all these legacy devices will 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 cost a lot of money. So those, those are the two things. So, so what I'm thinking is to actually build, if they'll allow us to build some national laboratories, maybe two or three national laboratories that could actually create a small replica out of these things. Uh, and and, and the, uh, in the technology lingo, it's called the digital twins. We could build some digital twins out of these things and try to run a red team exercise on this on these digital points, I think we could actually somehow alleviate or mitigate those 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 uh, attacks. So, so I just want to ask you one last question here. Uh, you, you know, getting back to, to to this specific event, you know, obviously we're going to find out some more over the next few weeks about what went into this and and uh, the steps that are being taken about it. But as we kind of wait for that to to come out. Where do you think we are as a country, the United States, in terms of addressing these things? I know, uh, you know, Adam and I were talking uh, off the air before we started about, uh, you know, some of the steps Biden's taken with the task force and things like that. I mean, do you think that that's enough? Uh, what, what steps would you take if you were in charge here? Yeah, one thing, what, what I'm going to do is to actually get some more people trained in vessel control system security. That's a big thing. Uh, that we're, we don't have so many people, uh, uh, so many individuals that are trained in this area, protecting this uh, industrial control systems. Uh, the other thing is the thing that I already mentioned earlier, create some digital points to actually run this uh, red teaming exercise, penetration testing on this, on this type of, uh, of the, on this type of critical infrastructure. So digital twins, just maybe to translate right for people that may not be familiar with the terminology, we would think of it as a live fire yeah. environment where we could essentially replicate that infrastructure, but we could do so either virtually or physically, and we could then go hands-on, to Daniel's point. We can red team and pen test against it, uh, but that's that's what we're talking about when we talk about digital twinning, yeah. right, is the ability to reproduce that activity. And have mm -hmm. some sort of parity to the actual Yeah, OT to make systems. to make it as close yeah. to the real thing as possible, right. but on a small scale. Right. Right on a small scale. Well, that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, this is this is something that's only going to become bigger uh, as the years go on and, and more and more systems, uh, you know, are accessible online and, and things that weren't before uh, in, in the in the infrastructure, uh, you know, pipeline. It, well, pipeline's the wrong word here, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, in, in that uh, supply chain and things can be can be hacked. That's definitely I, I'm hearing that at. security is expensive, complex, and we suck at it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's important. <laughs> more, more stay tuned. More to yeah, 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 it's great. <laughs> If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.